Let's go. Alright, what's up, Poker Pals? This is Viduga29 coming back at you with the GBA people. We have been hyping this shit up. We initially made a GBA, it did not go so well, so we revamped it, we've redone it, and I am happy to be joined by two of my dear friends. We have Adam the Bees Knees and Jack the Miendo. Say hello, gentlemen. Hello. What up, homies? So Jack today. Canada's. So today, we are right. recapping the choices by all of the trainers, and we have them basically in order of when they were drafting. Um, so basically, the uh, rules, guys, is that you could pick four OU, four UU, and then three of RU and below. So there were definitely some really snaky plays and different Pokemon taken, but I think everybody's pretty happy with how their teams turned out. So first of all, we have Tom, otherwise known as Thomas Star of the Arizona Raditars, his newly revamped team is Omastar, Raditar, Armaldo, Hippowdon, Ninetales, Politoed, Steelix, Heliolisk, Trevenant, Sandslash, and Chansey. Gentlemen, what do we think? It's not so good. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, and Tom's going to hate me for saying this, but it's the worst team out of the list. Yeah, dude, the, he, the Rattata thing. I mean, everyone has a ghost type practically, right? Yeah. Dude, we all have answers. I think we all have answers to it. Unless you're um, Vincent. And the weather, yeah. the weather thing. Well, it's, it's a real gimmick that's not going to fly real well. Well, Tom told me he had a plan, because, you know, Omasar gets Swift Swim, so does Armaldo. Um, Trevenant can use Harvest in the Sun. Politoed has that Drizzle, so Steelix can also be um, Sand Force in the Sand. Then you've got Heliolisk, which can have Dry Skin, or I think you have Solar Power. You can have one of the two. So but, like, it's, it's too gimmicky. And yeah. I, don't know, I don't know if he can make it work. More power to him, but I don't see. Like, I think, this I, think like he, I think he might. I think I think he might surprise a few people. I think people aren't going to really predict what he's going to bring. And definitely the other thing that we haven't really considered is that we forget that Omastar has Shell Smash, which can still make it a very terrifying Pokemon in this tournament. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah, Omastar is probably his best pick. If not, I... if not Omastar, probably I actually kind of like. The um Chansey Trevenant core. I don't mind that. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's nice. It definitely covers each other's weaknesses pretty solid. They do. Mm. Um, Normal goats makes a really good pairing. And actually, we'll Chansey, again, Chansey and Hippowdon too. Chansey and Hippowdon's on a bad little pairing there too. And he can have more than one way core. Yeah. Or more than two. two That's the thing. Cores, he can definitely different. switch it around a little bit. I think there's a lot of versatility, but I mean. He was basically going for the gimmick, and I think you're right, it's not going to be as effective as he's hoping, but I don't think he's going to go through the whole tournament without a win. I think he's definitely going to surprise a few people with some certain sets and ways that he plays, and I think he can get some results. Maybe. All right. uh, so well, that's best and worst and surprising. Alright, I think his best uh, choice... Best pick. Chancy. I'm going to say Hippowdon. I'm going to sound crazy, but I'm going to say Heliolisk. Really? Actually, Heliolisk is not bad. Because because with his weird-ass gimmicks, Heliolisk is the most versatile. And plus, Heliolisk is just really good in general. Yeah, you make a solid point. Okay, move, um, moving on. Oh, no, least threatening, I'm going to say, is Rattata. In, in his... I wouldn't say it's the best Rattata. Yeah, screw it. Most surprising... Um, uh, probably Rattata. <laughs> yeah. So I think I think we're all in agreement I'm, there. Probably Rattata. It was a redraft from some Flora, so. I mean, I didn't expect that one either, but. At I least think he was trying to go with the Flora Yeah. The thing is, like, Nine Tails can. Have, the thing is, Nine Tails itself. Nine Tails itself can also run Flash Fire, so it can actually be a decent little partnership there, possibly with Trevenant on a um, Sandstorm team. Yeah, it'd be fun. There's a lot of versatility there. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, let's move on. I, I mean, think, I don't know. gentlemen, shall we? Much, if any. I think, no, yeah, I, I see him going towards near the bottom of the ladder, but I think he'll still surprise a few people. I think um, MVP for his team, I wouldn't be surprised with something like Omasar or Armaldo because it has just that ability to sweep uh, if this uh, rain gets yeah, up. Yeah, has got a. Uh, Armaldo's a little underrated in this in the rain because it gets Swift Swim and Aqua Jet. But yeah. you know, all right. So Adam, let's Adam, examine Adam. Yeah, team, let's right? examine Adam's team. Adam. Adam can tell us. Team, Adam. The best team? So Adam has the Kansas Cocooners, he has Sableye, Porygon 2, Actually, Heatran. no, no, no. Uh, I changed it. Uh, my Baltimore Beedrills. 
Baltimore Beedrills, we have Sableye, Porygon 2, Heatran, Scizor, Tentacruel, Garchomp, Whimsicott, Espeon, Electros, Virizion, and Clawitzer. So, what do you think, Jack? First off, it's all right, sir. Best, best pick, I would say, is a time between Scizor and Sableye, because both of them are really, really good, whether they're Mega or not, and they both serve a bunch of roles, and you can be really versatile with those two. Definitely. I, I think that's, Worst pick, I, I think probably Virizion. Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know. I actually honestly think Adam's worst pick was Whimsicott. Yeah. He didn't use it last time when he drafted. Yeah. I don't know why he chose it this time, because in a lot of situations, I'm already seeing Virizion will see a lot more play than Whimsicott, so he could have maybe gone for a straight fairy, like a Slurpuff instead. Yeah, but... Slurpuff's relying on the belly drum. Nah, nah, you can run Carmine. Dude, you can run Carmine Slurpuff. You don't even know. You don't even know Carmine Slurpuff, friend. I'm just hoping these ones have gotten, like, this bulkier Pokemon just Encore sub. Yeah. I can see it being alright. I just, I I just, I I can see it also being, I I think that your bottom five picks, you're basically only going to be using one of those per battle. I think you're basically going to be with your top six Pokemon. Most of those will be going to most of your battles. Um, I, I can expect definitely... I mean, Espeon's... Espeon's not bad. Espeon's a bit of a monster, though. Espeon's not bad. I think that definitely I you'll... I can expect the Sableye Porygon 2 Heatran core most of the time. Like, I can I can assume that's what he's going to bring. Tentacruel's not bad. Garchomp's really good at setting up the rocks. Scizor, again, is just an absolute monster. Uh, he has that versatility with his yeah, Megas. Garchomp's really versatile, too. I think, yeah. I I think Garchomp's he's... Garchomp's versatile as well. No one snags mm. Garchomp. I mean... I know, I, I, I should have picked it up. But then again, I'm happy with my OU picks anyway, so it's all Gucci. Um, yeah. I'm going to say his best... I'm going to say, Adam, your best pick was Sableye. I think definitely. Um, very versatile, and I can see it putting in a lot of work, because you can fake the uh, Mega set and go with Prankster, and then when you know the hazards can be coming up, you can just Mega straight away and deal with them. So that's pretty nifty. I think your worst pick, like I said, was Whimsicott. The most surprising pick for me, though, I think um, was Clawitzer. Yeah, I didn't see that one coming at all. But I guess you kind of just needed an RU poke, and it was just like there, so. Yeah. You know. I mean, my RU pokes aren't the best. Everyone kind of took the better ones earlier on. I kind of just went with my OU and UU. Hmm. Yeah. I still think it's a very yeah, solid thing. Yeah. All right, let's move on to my boy John. All righty. Uh, Florida Talent Flames. Now, John's team has a couple holes, but I still think it's amazing. He has some solid pokes. Like, the Kofagrigus, uh, Snorlax core, beautiful. Plus, uh, Latios can be especially defensive. Um, Keldeo is Keldeo, Dragonite is Dragonite. I'd say his biggest weakness is probably his lack of diversity in walls, and his yeah. only then Sceptile, after using it last season, I can say it's mostly just, uh, it's not bad. But I've never had it like do that much work. Yeah, that ice weakness. We're just gonna have yeah. to quickly just take one quick second to pause, okay? Alrighty, we're back. Just had to quickly deal with something. I think one of the most underrated. I think okay, honestly, I think John's best pick is Dragonite. I think nobody. Yeah, yeah. I don't think anybody. You never really see banded Dina anymore, I guess because Mamoswine was kind of around and there's Altaria and all that jazz, but I think in this kind of environment, banded Dragonite, even Dragon Dance, Lumberry, whatever you want to run, weakness policy, I mean, Dragonite has a I really good purpose. There's a lot I know of... John's a big fan of weakness policy, Dinite. Yeah, I think it's definitely... Uh, the classics that... I know. think it's definitely a Pokemon that I can see him abusing and using quite well. I mean, obviously you think that your first choice when you see a po- um like a team is saying, oh yeah... Sylveon's his best pick because he chose it first, right? Well, I think that sometimes a lot of people choose their best picks later on when some people don't think about it. I mean, he drafted his Latias in round 8, and nobody saw that coming. No, sorry, yeah. round 8? No, round 7. Sorry. I think his biggest downfall is choosing two Hitmons. They're both solid fighting, you know? And he already has the Zoruk, the Snorlax. I get it's Confagrius, but there's a little... Pros don't outweigh the cons here. I don't know. I think he's got a solid team. As solid as he could get, considering I was kind of picking all some stuff for him, and we didn't really have a total idea of what he wanted to do. Yeah. So, it, it's definitely not as strong as it could have been, but I still think it's really solid. Alright, so, best, worst, and surprising? 
Best is, I'm going to agree, it's either Dragonite or maybe Keldeo. Worst is probably Hitmon Lee, I guess. I'd nah, say nah, nah. I'd say, I'd say Hitmon Self is probably his worst, just because Hitmon Lee can run a really nice offensive set. I think... I think the Zoro can also throw people off. Dude, guard. I think Zoroark's going to be the most surprising. I think he can definitely bluff with Zoroark, and I think it could work really well in conjunction with Kofagrigus. Yeah. I think I could definitely be, as uh, Jack would say, very spooky. A little spooky, definitely. Kofagrigus Snorlax is going to be a rock-solid core. Yeah. Snorlax. Yeah, and the other thing that... I guess boost that is that, you know, knockoff isn't really going to be as solid when you have Pokemon like Hitmontop and Keldeo running around. So exactly, exactly. He does have that decent... I mean, he doesn't have complete defensive coverage, but I can definitely see him running special defensive Curse Lax with Kofagrigus, and Curse Lax could be a big Pokemon as well. It's very difficult to take down after time. Alright, so Jesse. Jesse, Legion of, the Legion of Gloom. The Legion of Gloom. <laughs> Anyway, so Jesse is my friend, uh, who goes to the same college as me, and he normally does VGC, but we were like, we need battlers, and I know Jesse's really good. Stop when he good people out here, Jack. Look, look, Jesse's really good, and but he, I know he loves to use unconventional set, so I don't didn't know what he'd expect to pick, or what I expected him to pick. But holy crap, is his team amazing? I did not expect him to end up with that beautiful of a team. It's pretty solid. Mm. Lander is there yet. Rotom, Heat, Fortress, Clefable, Gyarados, Mamoswine, Drapion, Superior, Ambipom. And then Sigilift and Swellow, those are, you know, solid. But all those other ones are amazing Pokemon. I have no doubt in well, his ability to pull crap off. Drapion's not the best, but I've seen it used really well. I think he, I think he's picked on. I think he's picked up honestly, I think he's picked up seven good Pokemon, which from a draft is I guess average. I think that's what you expect. You're hoping to get about seven good Pokemon, so you have a solid team of six, and then maybe one filler or a bench warmer. Um, I can't really see Swellow getting much play. I don't really see it coming in at all. It was just something he chose. Sigilyph, maybe. Um, I don't know. If you're going to have the chance to set up. Yeah, Swellow's pretty fast. It hits decently hard. I guess on some team. It might have a little bit of usage, I don't know, it depends. I guess yeah, in the last so. GBA from the little battles, we did see um, Tom did put in a lot of work with Amber Palm, so I guess that could see some usage again, because that Life Orb Technician fake out is pretty strong. Yeah, that's the point. So, let's see. Best pick. Lando. Lando or Mamoswine? Even though I Mamoswine think Lando or Gyarados? I think Gyarados, Gyarados is his best pick, because... Gyarados is a very mm -hmm. underrated Maybe. Mega with a lot of really good sets, and I think against some of the current popular Megas, the other thing is Gyarados doesn't even need to Mega Evolve to really scare them. Like, against Mega Metagross, if you don't carry Thunder Punch, Gyarados, if it doesn't Mega Evolve, can just Intimidate you first, or I guess, yeah, after you do the Tough Claws, you'll get Intimidated. Then you can just proceed to D-Dance up, and then Mega Evolve when you're ready to, and then crush their team. So it's all like playing the mind games. True, true, true. I'd, I'd say his worst is the Sigilyph or Swallow. I'd say Swallow. I'd say Sigilyph. I think Swallow. I, think I, I genuinely think that Sigilyph can put in a lot more work than Swallow can in this team. I don't know. Swallow's fast and strong. Sigilyph's just like, eh. But I think Sigilyph's is most surprising. Definitely, definitely. I think the one thing that I don't honestly like about his team is the lack of reliable coverage for water-type attacks. He has Gyarados, which I'm sure is fine, but a lot of water type Pokemon do have access to electric moves. And ice moves. So that means that Gyarados is under a bit of a threat. If Gyarados is weakened and taken out, then his team is very weak to water type Pokemon. And so that could be a bit true. of an issue. True, true. I guess Charles, the Jubilee jump bluffs. I am I don't actually like mind I don't mind Charles's team. I think he's uh, picked some pretty solid Pokemon all I round. I think Charles' biggest downfall is he has no way to get rid of rocks for Charizard. Except with Togekiss, but that's weak to rocks anyway. Yeah. So. That is no, a little bit of an issue. I'm, but then again, it does depend on the Charizard set that he chooses to run. I think Charizard X doesn't really care about it as much as Charizard Y will. Yeah. yeah, but either, either way, you're still taking at least a quarter, and that's if you manage to Mega Evolve before the rocks get set up, which is yeah. clearly going to be a priority, considering he has one, two, 
three things that are weak to rock. Yeah, I don't know why. I don't understand why he chose um three of his things in OU to be at least twenty five percent weak to rock. Like it's twenty five percent damage. Um, I do like that he has the Amoonga Slow King core. Uh, yeah, I do. I think I don't know that Cure and Black's pretty spooky. Cure and Black's yeah. pretty predictable though. It has, like, one set it can run. Too bad it doesn't have any good physical ice moves. I know. If it got Icicle Crash, it'd be Ubers, so... Well, also, Glyscore, I don't... I mean, I used Glyscore last time, and it put in some work, but... I don't know. Everyone's got an ice type now, practically. Or something that can. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, I don't know. Glyscore is still a Glyscore. It'll put in decent work, I'm sure. I think the I thing, think... the one thing that I don't like about his team is that he only has one resistance to Psychic, and he has three Pokemon that are weak to Psychic. And he's That's... also got three Pokemon weak to Ground. That's and, true. Yeah, I mean, Ground he can deal with a oh, little oh, bit oh, more. Oh. He can deal with Ground a little bit more because he has um, Togekiss and Glasgow. Yeah. But Mamoswine can plow through his whole team. Yeah, when you look at it like that, it probably could. Um, Bessie's gonna do well. <laughs> I think Charizard's the best. Definitely, definitely. Because they can do, do two things, two different Megas. Worst, I would say, is him not having a spinner, so you can pick any Pokemon you want there. So One of them should be a spinner. I think I maybe think. I'd go with... I'd go out on a limb and say that I think... His worst could potentially be, um, Tox... No, not Toxicroak. I actually think for Alligator. No, no, I think it should be Curum because he's got three Dragon types, if Charizard evolves. Yeah, that's true. Curum B's a little eh. I think... Right, I, 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 I say for Alligator just for the fact that I don't think in this environment you're going to see for Alligator be able to set up and do as well when there's a lot of things that are faster and a lot of things that can hit a bit harder than he can. Hey, bro, I gotta go pause it. Pause it? Aye. Yeah. Okay, Arms. we're back after a little bit of an interlude. We are now going yeah. to continue... What are, you, what are you saying? What are you saying? I was saying something about penile. Oh, can you, I thought you said, wait a second. I was like, oh, what? <sighs> anyway, we're moving yeah, nah, on to nah. Frank's team, the St. Francisco Volcaronas. Um, he's got... Uh, yeah. He changed it from for alligators because somebody else wanted for alligators. Yeah. I think. Oh, he just he, it was because he had a Volcarona on his team. He's got Diancie, Volcarona, Magnezone, Chesnaw, Empoleon, Crobat, Crocodile, Venusaur, Jellicent, Dotrio, and Hitmon Chan. What do we think, gentlemen? He has a solid team. I'd be scared of anything Frank would make, to be honest. Yeah, so, Frank's one of those battlers who can be very diverse. Well, Frank knows what he's doing. He's got double grass. Um, uh. <laughs> I think the Frank, thing that he Frank, has, let, he right, has so. sorry, you go, you go. Okay, I, I think Frank's an amazing battler. I think his team's are really solid. Dude, Jack, together, with our powers combined, we will beat him. No, no, no. Frank Frank, and I feel like are going to have a narrow match at best. Alright, so... I think I can still beat him, though. I, I think Frank's, like, on my level of battling. Am I not? I'll say that about, of course not, Adam. Nobody else is, but Frank. Oh. I think well, he's... Okay, okay, let's just go through. I think his best pick is Venusaur. Uh, Definitely. yes. <laughs> I think his Venusaur worst is pick. a monster. He doesn't have a worst pick. I'm going to say it's Hitmonchan. Yeah, they're all solid. They all serve solid. I'm going to say... I'm going to say Hitmonchan. Yeah, Hitmonchan. I'm going to go right out there and say no. And definitely Hitmonchan. I don't care that it can hit well. I don't care that AV is good. If you, look at, if you look at that team... When is he... Okay, when is he going to use Hitmonchan over Chesnaught, though? Let's be real. That's well... I guess he doesn't really have another physical wall, does he? Other than, he has a weakness uh, to flying on all that. He has a little weakness to flying. He has Diancie and Magnezone to deal with that. And However, a little weakness to electricity. Yeah, he has Crocodile to he has Crocodile and Dog Trio, and I guess Magnezone to deal with the electric weakness. He has decent coverage well, he also has all around. It's just that I think it depends on what walls he brings in certain situations. Like, say he's going to get to Cresselia, and it really depends on if Cresselia's rock and Psychic or Psy Shock against that Venusaur. Oh, true. I think yeah. um, he has a good team. I don't think it's... Uh, again, I think he's in the same situation where he's picked, I reckon, about seven 
good Pokemon, and then some are just on the, the fringe. I think the ones that are kind of on the fringe for me are Hitmonchan, Dugtrio, Crocodile, and honestly, I actually think that um, Magnezone's on the fringe for me. Sure, it gets a trap Pokemon. Okay. Sure, it gets a trap Pokemon. Sure, the Choice Scarf set is nice, but Magnezone's not very bulky. Magnezone is basically well, just locked into two attacks, and I don't think it's going to put in as much work. He picked it, like, just after I picked uh, Skarmory, because he was like, lol, no. Well, the one, the one plus, I guess, yeah, the one plus for Frank is that in this um, GBA, we have Sizzle, we have Skarmory, we have Ferrothorn, the three things it likes to trap. But, especially against Sizzle, Frank cannot expect to switch Magnezone straight in, because Superpower is a thing. So he might have to sack off something to Sizzle to then trap it with Magnezone to get the kill. True, true, true. Dude, uh, uh, got this, man. But I mean, the same thing with you, Jack, with your Skarmory, you could just carry Shed Shell and then get out of there, so. Exactly, I, 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 I was already planning on that. I think it's pretty cool that he has, I, a, think, I think it's cool that he has a trapping call, though. Um, I think that Magnezone, you know, Volt Switching out against, you know, something you can't really deal with, and then having Doug Trio most likely be able to deal with it is pretty nifty. Yeah, Doug Trio is definitely going to be an interesting Pokemon. I, I, mean, think, I can't wait to see what he's going to do with those. I think it's good because... See, Magnezone, like, the best thing to resist Magnezone's hits is going to be, like, a bulky Steel type or an Electric type, and both of which get destroyed by Dugtrio, so I think it's pretty good. It's pretty solid. Yeah. I think, honestly, the um, surprising pick for me um, in his team, I'm going to go with Jellicent. Yeah. I think... Yeah. I mean, he I think it's a good so, choice. Jellison absorbs the water moves, which it is, does. Which he but have. I mean, does he really? Hey, okay, the thing that I just don't—I'm not too big of a fan on—is he basically has two grass types and two water types in the same team, which would normally be like a really solid core. But I think actually they really need that fire type to be paired with, and Volcarona isn't the best fire type to pair with them. So I don't know if that was just. I feel like yeah. maybe they're just lacking an extra element to the core because the core seems very one-dimensional right now. I get you. Okay, let's let's move on. Let's move on though. Um, we got now Vincent with the Green Bay Pidgeots. I think he actually has a pretty spooky, scary team to be honest. He has uh, Exodrill, Conkelda, Thunderous Incarnate, Florges. No, sorry, Florges. Yes, Florges. I thought he'd change it, but yeah, he's got Florges, Talonflame. Absol, Suicune, Shaman, Bronzong, Quagsire, and Sinchino. Boys, this is a very good team. Eh, I don't know. For some reason, it doesn't scare me. I don't know why. It does not scare me, either. However, I think Conkelder and Excadrill are great choices. Definitely, definitely. Thunderous Eye, I know, can put in work with T-Wave and all that. I don't think Talonflame is the best in this type of situation. I think, I think, it, de I think it depends on the opponent, honestly. Like if your opponent doesn't have a straight-up counter to Talonflame, so say, like, um, Aiden, for example. <coughs> if Aiden didn't bring the Raikou, then he can just spam Brave Bird. Yeah. So it's yeah. just, I think it's just Talonflame could be really good. And also, the specially defensive Talonflame set can be very, very handy against opponents' teams. It can work in quite well. So I think Talonflame mm -hmm. does have a utility. I think one of the issues that I initially saw, though, was, I believe... He is going to be solely reliant on Excadrill to get the rapid spins off, which, I mean, to be honest, I'm not always a fan of, because I think that there are a lot of bulky ghost types here that would love it for Excadrill to come in on them. So yeah. I think that he's really risking stuff there with um, Driller. I gotta agree on that but one. But Jack, coming from a guy who used Drill last time around, having like Choice Scarf and that, do you think that... He, I mean, obviously, not having uh, Rapid Spin is going to... Uh, not using Rapid Spin more often is going to hurt Talonflame, but do you think he can still function without needing Rapid Spin with the rest of his team? I think um, the, his biggest problem... Let me, let me look at his team really quickly. Like, the Endurus Eye is weak. Talonflame is weak. Uh, he does have the Magic Bouncer. Yeah, but... Yeah. Soul, with, but that's going to be late game. And if probably. he doesn't lead with it, you can set up the Stealth Rocks beforehand. True. Yeah, definitely. I think um, he could have used another Pokemon for defogging or rapid spinning. But as far as Excadrill goes, I mean, it's probably the best spinner in the metagame. So. I'm actually not going to lie. I, I genuinely think one of his biggest, and the, it's the most surprising pick for me, but I think it's also one of his better picks, is actually Sinchino. I think Sinchino's yeah. a little bit underrated. I think that definitely... It, um. 
you can come in against most types, and Skill Link is an amazing ability for it to have with King's Rock. It can be a very annoying set, and Cinchino is very fast, so it's a really good yep. way of breaking down walls over time. Definitely, yeah, I definitely have to agree on that one. The one thing I'm not, the one thing I don't like about this team is the lack of a Ghost type. I think a Ghost type would have been really good, especially with Absol on the team. Um, having a Ghost type to be able to take this hits. Bronzong is probably the one that he's going with, thinking he can take the Fighting type hits, but. Honestly, a lot of fighting types can get um, knockoff, which can be pretty Bronzong detrimental. Is neutral to it. Yeah, it is neutral to Bronzong, but it's like compared to being completely resisted, like to doing nothing, to getting hit. It's, I think there were still a few ghost types that he could have picked that maybe could have more use of a Bronzong, but something that I have noticed a little bit that could come into play is with Bronzong and Quagsire and Pokemon List, he does have the tools that he could have for a Trick Room team. Ah, uh, true, true. The uh, only problems of a lot of this book. Okay, so you got the Excadrill, Thundorus, Talonflame, Absol. They won't fit into. Well. They won't, but you see, you have Conkelda, Florgis, Suicune, Shaman, Bronzong, and Quagsire. Is not the worst team. It's not. Yeah, I, Trick Room Conkelda is a threat. And I think it's definitely something that can surprise a few opponents. Like you come up against a faster team that's expecting to you know come in and destroy, and then they just get. Outsped because of this trick room environment. Like uh, Jesse's team. Exactly. True. All right. Um, what do we think is his best pick? We can all agree on Excadrill. Yeah, definitely. Well, it's either Excadrill or Conkelda. I don't know which one you'd prefer there, but it's one of the two. I'm gonna say his worst pick again, probably Bronzong. I think Bronzong or Quag. Bronzong. Maybe Quag. No, I'm gonna sound like a major hypocrite here, but I think Absol might be his worst pick because he didn't build his team around it, and Absol needs to be on a very specific mm. team to work well. I think I'm just going to be a rebel and say Talonflame is his worst pick. Oh, snap! Uh, I, that's fair. I think, yeah, it's it's open to opinion. All right, let's move on to Aiden, the Alabama Bahians. So he's got his um, Altaria, Cresselia, Raikou, Melodic, Cryogonal, Landorus Eye, Umbreon, Venomoth, Swampert, Durant, and Ludicolo. So this kind of screams, it's like half Altaria offense and half Rain hyper offense. Yeah, it is, really. You no, know, it's a good team, it's a good team. Definitely more, I think he'll have more success with weather than Tom will. Just throwing it out there. Mm. True. Uh, I think that Altaria is pretty nice. Landorus Eye is a bit of a monster, too. I like Umbreon and Weezing Core. Of course, always. Covers each other's weaknesses really well. Well, if yeah, anything, one thing I'd say maybe as a minus could be that I don't think Cryogonal is a very good spinner. No. A, uh, I don't really rate good. it at all as a spinner. It's no, an ice type or can't take the hit. And if that's it the case, it just opens up a lot of holes. Like, Rocks opens up a lot of holes in his team because a ice. lot of his Pokemon don't appreciate the damage. Yeah, definitely. And ice is not defensive. No. Uh, it's, it has base 30 defense. It, it'll get yeah. destroyed by anything physical. I know. I think that the Maybe. other thing we have to consider is Venomoth. Um, Venomoth is actually a really dangerous Pokemon because Quiver Dance and Baton Pass, especially with Landorus Eye and Altaria on the team, is pretty terrifying. I agree, but I think for OU, he could have done a little better. Yeah, definitely. There's still. Like, I mean, what he could have picked up, on, I, I mean, honestly. What I think he could have picked out that would have been better than Venomoth and basically done the exact same job but better would be Gengar. True. I think yeah. Gengar would have been a better choice and would have really worked well with the team because um, it actually works well with the core that he's got set up. Uh, the one thing I guess that I'm not really too feeling great about is... Oh, oh get that core off the screen. Um, is the lack of a normal type. I think normal typing is very important um, to have good coverage, and he does lack that, and maybe choosing a normal type like Kangaskhan over Ludicolo may have been a better choice, but I can understand that he wanted the rain team, so. True, true, true. Alright. Best, worst, surprising. Alright, I, I think his best That's... choice is actually, Lando. I think Cresselia. Ah, spooky. See, the thing is, Cresselia I... is really good now, and it could be really good in this tournament, too. I think Cresselia is really good as well. I think the worst pick's Cryogonal. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Definitely. It's either Cryogonal or Ludicolo. Pick one of the two. 
and the most surprising is Durant. Yeah, Kevin Durant, I think is... See, the thing is, it runs Hustle, and it can do a shit ton of damage, so that's going to be a bit spooky. Work at this. Work it's at a this. double-edged sword, though. Yeah, yeah it is. It is very frail on the other side, and honestly, any solid physical wall should be able to take a hit and then reply. So he's got to play smart with it. Yeah, if you don't get that home claws up, it'll screw you up at the worst times. Even like you don't even have to run home claws; you can run at choice. So we'll see how that goes. But yeah. Anyway, yeah, let's right. let's let's move on to our good old friend Jack, the Maryland Mian Oh, Jack. Oh, Jack. My team is beautiful. Jack is a thing was actually beauty. probably I think Jack is the happiest out of anybody with his draft. He got Manetric. <laughs> I could not. Yeah. You got Manetric, Skarmory, <laughs> Donfan, Gudra, Tornadus T, Vaporeon, Tangroth, Mian Shao, Slowbro, Flygon, and Meloetta. Jack, you need to stop. Holy so, crap. I'll admit- the only thing I regret drafting is Flygon, but I really didn't have much of an option. So, yeah. other than that, all the other ten, I think, are perfect for me. So, Skarmory, Gudricor is a thing of beauty. <laughs> Tangrowth, Vaporeon, and, this, and then I have Slowbro just in there, because why not? Um, and Manectric is there to be a Manectric and completely destroy things. So, I'm happy, I'm so happy. I think probably so, if I'm going to talk about most surprising pick first, I'm going to say it's actually, yeah, the Slowbro you picked in round 9. I did not expect you to pick up Slowbro. I figured you were pretty content with having Manetric as your Mega. You wouldn't really need another filler. But Slowbro itself doesn't have to be Mega. It can also run that Regenerator set, which can be annoying as balls. So that's a bit frustrating. Oh, uh, yeah. The one I, thing, I had an OU pick. I was like, why not? It's Slowbro. You can't go wrong. Um, I think Mellow is surprising. Mellow is I think Mellow will put in work. It's, um, I it's think, good though, yeah. I think your best pick probably is. I want to say your yeah. best pick is probably either Skarmory or Donphan because you have one of the. You, you've taken two of the premier hazard control Pokemon and put them both in your team. Definitely, definitely. So I think that's a big coup for well, you that you were able to get both of them. Yep. And it's really limited everybody else in terms of um, hazard removal. Definitely, definitely. I think worst pick, I'd probably have to agree with you on Flygon, just because you already had Gudra, you already had the ground type in Don Fan, so it was just unnecessary typing for your team. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I really didn't. I think maybe a Pokemon like I know you already had, I know you already had Slowbro and Tornado C, but I think a Pokemon like Kingdra, um, no, you couldn't choose Kingdra because you got Elevator already. Um, I think there were other RU Pokemon maybe that you could have considered bringing in that maybe would have brought a bit more balance to your team, like preferably maybe Wait, some... Is it you, you now? I'm thinking uh, Kingdra, yeah, no, it's been um, Quick Band to like, BL, because it's, uh, uh, it's too good in RU. Definitely, definitely. Um, you. But I'm thinking maybe some kind of Ghost type wouldn't have been bad on your team. I, I, I'm just saying, like as coverage-wise, it wouldn't have been the worst thing for you to have. Gengar. Yeah. Uh, well, no, in yeah. RU. In RU, I'm thinking uh, uh, like Dust, Dust Noir. I think, I think like Dust Noir wouldn't have been a bad pick for the team. Eh, I didn't need more walls, definitely. I yeah. have too many walls. I think that you'll definitely have some really solid cores. I think it's kind of spooky that you have a Tornadus T and Slowbro Regenerator core. I mean, you get hurt by Electric too, so you have Dumb Fan. The only thing we Jack, about Jack, <laughs> Jack, you're just saying three of your walls are weak to Electric. Yeah, and the um, other thing is um, a lot of your walls, a lot of your Pokemon as well, don't really deal with ice types too well. You do have Slowbro and Vaporeon, but then they're also weak to right. grass. So it's just, I guess, it's just it's just setting up a team to manage your weaknesses. I think you have decent coverage. One Pokemon I can see giving you a little bit of grief if you lose Tornadus T at some point could be Venusaur, maybe, but that's that's a really big if. And you do have Gudra, so I, yeah. think, I think you've chosen a team that covers most of your weaknesses, um... Flygon maybe could have been something different to handle a few more things, but that being said, it does give you um, a really solid Choice Scarf user, so that could come in pretty My, handy. Yeah, that was, that was the idea in the moment, was it be a good Choice Scarfer with U-Turn, was my only thought process there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think we covered that one pretty well. So on to Matt. Um, he's the Frederick what? Uh, I forget, actually. Ah, <laughs> uh, the Frederick. We'll get back to you on that. Um, it's something. Anyway, uh, he's yeah. rocking Starmie, Victini, Scolipede, Ferrothorn, Gastrodon, Beedrill, Noivern, Mandibuzz, Cradilly, Porygon 2, and Tyrantrum. Dude, rocking the Beedrill, man. Nice. I actually yeah, I nice. actually think he's chosen a fairly solid team. 
Yeah, pretty solid. I think the I, one I thing. Oh, no, you go, you go. I, I had to give him a kick in the butt because he was gonna. The first thing he was gonna draft was gonna be Hydreigon, and I was like, "Why the hell would that be your first draft?" Mm. Oh my god. You gotta admit that would be a horrible. First it wouldn't oh, be the best. That team name is the Frederick Klefkies. Oh shit! Fuck him. Anyway, all right. I was like, "Why of all the Pokemon you could pick?" And anyway, then he decided he wanted DAC, but Frank got it. Anyway, that's why Starmie's his first one. I think Starmie's the- are great because it's a great spinner. It is. The one thing that I think is going to let him down is that I'm pretty sure he... Okay, the way I see it, Credilly is an okay Pokemon in its tier, but in this scenario, I don't think it's going to be as good as people think. I think it's alright, yeah. but I think it's a lot of big heavy hitters that wreck Credilly. So I think basically his core is Mandibuzz, Gastrodon, and Ferrothorn. And I don't know if That's it's going to be... I don't know if it's going to be the don't strongest... Don't underestimate Credilly, man. I, know, don't I, don't underestimate I don't know if I underestimate Credilly, but basically Gastrodon does Credilly's job better. Uh, it just depends on the type or what you're. I just think the other thing, against, the other thing I would say about his team is it's very knockoff weak. Oh, that's definitely true. I think yeah, Mandibuzz is the true. only Mandibuzz is like the only thing that really wants to take a knockoff. Ferrothorn, I guess to an extent, but yeah, but it doesn't like appreciate it. Now who's the knockoff weak Pokemon person? Yeah, I mean, I think I think Tyrantrum can put in work though. I think yeah, one thing that scares me the most about his team is the fact that he has Scolipede and Tyrantrum. Yes. Dude, that combo, think, that combo is gonna haunt my dreams. He would want I don't think, combo. He didn't. He really didn't need Scolipede and Beedrill though, because two bug poison types are just like. That's yeah. Not good. I think the other thing for his team is he only really has Mandibuzz and Noivern as his ground resists. Everything else takes it neutrally or really hard. So yeah. that means that I think. A lot of us have the ground type Pokemon to break through that, so then it's just breaking down his flying Pokemon, which can be done with rock. And again, Mamoswine is going to put in the finest of work. Oh, on the this other thing he's going to put in works against yeah. his team is Hazards. He has a lot, I think he has, let's see, one, two, three, four, five Pokemon out of his six weak to Stealth Rocks. Yep, at least he got Starmie. At least he picked up Starmie. He picked up Starmie, and, and he has Mandibuzz, so he has ways yeah, of so dealing it's with really it. really good. So I think he has an alright team. I think that it's probably mid-level right now, just because he doesn't really have the heavy hitters. Like, Beedrill's okay, Noivern's alright, but he doesn't really have a huge heavy hitter like yeah. some of the other teams to really break through walls. Unless he can get the Scolipede pass off, which is, trust me, from, from a person who has tried to do the Scolipede pass before, it is very annoying to try and do. Um, Tyrantrum could poke a few holes, it just depends on your defensive typing. Like, Jack wouldn't really worry too much because he has Donphan and Skarmory, but... For other people, they may um, have some issues with it. But I think it's a pretty solid team. I think that if he is able to maintain that defensive core and then keep on the offensive pressure, I think he should be okay. But the thing is, he doesn't have the biggest offensive pressure. Okay, I think, uh, he, uh, I think his best choice... McTee's going to keep up. Yeah. McTee's going to keep up pressure, though. That's the one thing. Um, McTee and Beedrill make a good U-turn thing. They do. I think, I, think his, um, I think his best choice is Ferrothorn. Definitely. Agreed. I think his I worst think so. choice is. I'm actually going to be Skull real. Pete, given the situation. I actually am going to say it. his worst choice is Mega Beedrill. Excuse me? He chose Scolipede first, so he knew all well that he was going to choose another bug poison, so he could have chosen something better in that situation. So that's why I think yeah, it's his worst pick. He should have picked Sharpedo and then had double speed boost, and that'd just be really spoopy. Mm hmm. Uh, I gotta admit, it's not that good. Yeah, uh, most man. surprising pick, I'm going to go with Tyrantrum. I think getting that last round is going to be really scary. That was, that was me who picked that for me. It was like, Jack, I need a good physical attacker in our unit. I was like, well, Tyrantrum's still available. Take it. The thing is, I don't. I think the surprising pick was Porygon Z. The ninth round. Draft 10. Sorry. Yeah. Both Porygons are taken. Mm. Well, not Porygon normal. One. Porygon one. Porygon. Just <laughs> Porygon. Alright, now we move on to Mr. Vertigo, the Blackthorn Bishop. His, his team sucks. This is horrible. He's already lost. Dude, okay. Real talk. <laughs> Real talk. Listen, or is pretty solid. Real talk, you have stall to the max. You do. It's not even stall. It's just a good bulky defense. I think that's kind of how stall works, I friend. think, yeah. Have you seen, like, my... Li- <laughs> I don't have all stall Pokemon, though. It's just... Vertigo, I say if you get a good, if there, someone has a good fighting type against you that can deal with aromatizzy, 
you you lost. Or in Latios, you um, lost. Um, what can fighting types do to wheezing? That's true. So you both said at the same time, not bad. <laughs> Plus, I have to blade. Yeah, but okay. Well, you, but you do have a big weakness of fighting in Tyranitar, Blissey, Cabalion, and I would have said Dewblade, but that is a ghost type. Yeah, I think that the I think the fighting weakness sort of. is matched though with Aromatis and I guess Aromatis, the blade wheezing. and wheezing. So basically, I have three yeah. checks to the three. Oh, weaknesses. and Celebi. Celebi, Celebi is not bad. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Latios, hell, Latios resisted as well, so you have five resistances. Yeah. I think your team's solid. I don't know why you picked New Blade, but I don't know why you picked Camera Up. That thing's a piece of shit. Nah, you see, it's, Camera Up's not bad. It's so Vertigo, it's so slow with all the fast water types. Yeah, and well, not every team, not every team's gonna be running the water types. Plus, I have like, I mean, uh, the reason I chose Camera Up initially is because it actually works really well in conjunction with Celebi and Rotom Wash. It's a very solid core. Probably would have preferred uh, Heatran if I could have got it, but unfortunately Heatran was taken very yeah, early on, so that yeah, wasn't gonna happen. Dude, Heatran, Heatran's gonna wreck you, very good. Oh, I know. How is Heatran wrecking me? What can Heatran do to camera up, though? Earthquakes. You, you're not running Earthquake Rear. on it, and I have Solid Rock. I don't even have to Mega Evolve to beat your Heatran. Dude, if I run Air Balloon, I wall you. You know what's scary if as well, run, though? If runs Air Balloon... You want to know a scary fact, what? guys? Aromatis what? can learn Trick Room. Yeah, I know. Spooky. Oh, snap! You, you definitely have the capabilities of doing that. Just watch out for Frank and his taunt team. Vertigo, I want you to run Trick Room. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Like, it's not that fast. Now I was pretty happy with right. my draft. I mean, honestly, if I could pick two Pokemon that maybe if I had the chance to change, I would. Instead of Cabalion, I really wanted Fortress, but that was taken so early on, and I was like, okay, whatever. Uh -huh. And the other one would have been, instead of Latios, maybe Kieran Black, because I think Kieran Black would have given me the Ice typing, which would have been really nifty on this team as well. You could have gotten Kieran Kieran. Yeah, I could have. I actually could have got Kieran, and I was considering... Getting him, but it was I was at the I stage. I love Kurum. I love regular Kurum so much. Don't I was going to get it over Tornadus. I was actually going to get it over Tornadus, but then I was like, well, you know what? I'd rather just have the Dragon, Psychic, and Flying. It'll it'll work. Fair enough. All right, your best draft probably Tyranitar, just because it has I so many options. Say... Let's see. No. All right. Worse though. Your worst is definitely camera up. Camera it's, gonna do, it's gonna do all Actually, the jack. No, no, I think his worst is Cabalion. It's not good. Yeah, but I mean, like, Cabalion can serve as a good uh, pivot and it can serve as a stealth rock lead. It's... Camera up just there to be a camera up. Yeah, <laughs> Adobe ass camel. You watch. Camera yeah. up's gonna put in work. Alright. We'll see. We'll see. What's my most surprising pick? New Blade. Alright then. Hey, it was even in UU. -U. <laughs> it moved up from RU, so it's pretty good. Alright, finally, we have one team left and then we are done with the this. The bottom of the barrel, too. The relatively it's superior. Most teams, most teams, most teams. The relatively superior. Most teams good. It's not it's bad. It's not bad, especially for someone who did not get to draft any of his mods practically. Yeah. I think. I think U is a solid pick. Yep. Still doesn't have a solid core, though. He doesn't really have a, anything to be a real wall, except again, being, like Mew and Zap. He has two fire types and three flying types. And again, knockoff is a bit and of a problem. Yeah. Rocks are going to be a bitch. Yeah. Um, I think... I don't know why he chose Braviary. I literally gave him the first two RU picks, and he picked them. Nice. Excel Gore and Braviary. I, I don't know. Excel Gore's good. It's good. It can do that final gambit. It can be choice mix bug buzz. Yeah. Uh, I think Mew is his best pick, though. Alright. I do don't know about that. I think that a lot of people are really not um, giving Pinsir the credit it deserves. Yeah, Pinsir can do work if it gets on the right team. Like, it wouldn't do work against mine, because I'll always have Skarmory to sit there. Yeah, but like, see, the thing Pinsir, is, Pinsir, Pinsir, just, Pinsir just needs you weakened enough, and Pinsir can actually do some serious damage to all of these teams. Pinsir is such an underrated True. Mega again. I know, that was like my first competitive Mega I really loved to use. 
Vento's so. a cool mod. Too bad the rocks. Rocks are yeah, annoying, exactly. but he does have the Blastoids on the team. He can run the Defog on Mew. He can run it on Zapdos. So he has ways of dealing with rocks. And I think the other thing, the surprising pick for me is Dimanitan, because Choice Band and Dimanitan is scary. I don't care if you have. I don't care if you have a bulky water type. I don't care if you have a Vaporeon. You're still getting absolutely destroyed by Flare Blitz. Uh, I think Darmanitan is a good pick. I think Darmanitan might be a little better than Infernape. But that being said, I don't know why he has two fire types in UU that are both physical attackers. I think Infernape running the special Infernape set. Yeah, special. that special set with Infernape isn't bad. I guess. Yeah. I think his worst pick is Braviary, though. True. 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 Yeah, definitely. Um, I think I'm surprised that he picked Bayonet the first round. Okay, let's give let's give our honest opinions because we're not all gonna blow our own horns here. Who do we think? Okay, top three, just team wise. Me, 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 me. Really? <laughs> I, I think, think Frank, if I'm looking at team, think, yeah. I'll I'll, I'll I'll let you guys. Uh, I I would say not including me. I would say Frank, uh, Adam, and probably either you, Vertigo, or Jesse. I would agree on that. Yeah, Frank. I'd say maybe somebody we're not giving... Okay, this is just me saying it, but I think someone we're not giving enough credit for is possibly Charles' team. I know we gave it a hard time, but the thing is... <laughs> He has a really nice mix of offensive and defensive cores. The one thing he's maybe lacking is a dark type. Would have been nice. That's like the one thing. But he has he has gets off rocks. That's he, the, the thing is the thing is like he has the regen core, which is going to be an absolute pain in the ass to take out. He has Gliscor, which is going to also be a pain in the ass to take out. And Gliscor actually works amazingly well with the regenerator core. Um, he has. Jolteon if he needs to suck up those electric hits, but he also then can run Megazard X, which can be terrifying on a team that's trying to stall out because it can go for its roosts and stuff and also be really bulky with them. So I can see him actually running a really solid bulky offense team that could be quite scary. Andrew, who do you guys think are going to be in the bottom three? Uh, bottom Tom. bottom oh. three, I'm thinking, if, if I'm honest, Tom, Will, and probably... Ah, oh, man. The next one's the tricky one. I, I think, team-wise, I'm actually going to say John. Maybe, maybe. maybe. I, I know John's a good battler, but... I don't deny John's not a good battler. I just think his team, battle. yeah, it's just, it's a good team, but it's also just, threat-wise, when I look at his team, all I'm really seeing is Latios, maybe Sept. He basically has three dragons, and to me, that's a screaming, hit me with a nice move, hit me with a nice move. Um, yeah, true. Sceptile, the deadliest ice. Sept yeah, Sceptile is deadly with ice. Um, Dragonite, if you break its multi-scale, it's not really going to threaten you. Keldeo is a good choice, I guess, to resist the ice, but if Keldeo... Yeah, Keldeo can only do, like, a couple of things. Yeah, I mean, Keldeo and Snorlax are basically his only real answers to ice-type attacks. Um, true, true. And the other thing is that, basically... I don't know, I just think that his team doesn't have as much balance defensively as other teams. Yeah. Well, I guess it's a wrap. That's a wrap, guys. So, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a big old thumbs up. And please comment in the description, not description, comment in the comment section um, about who you think will win, who you think has the most surprising team, who you think maybe has the worst team. Don't be haters, though. Um, and just make sure that you keep on watching for the GBA. We are going to be uploading videos um Whenever we can, Adam decided to jump the gun on his video. It's probably already up on his channel, but um, we try not to give it, any of it away when we we're doing this analysis chat. But anyway, any closing comments, gentlemen? Uh, subscribe to my channel and Jack's. Don't subscribe to Adam's channel or Virgo's. I just what? said subscribe to yours. <laughs> yeah, Jack, you he's such a little Jack. Why is such a little bitch? Jack, why you ought to be a jackass? Because it's in my name. Alright, so anyway, guys, make sure you do. I'm going to have all of our channels in the description. To check out, most of the uh, discussion videos and stuff will be posted on PokerPal as well, but be sure to check out all our channels so you can watch our live um, commentary that we do of our own battles. But anyway guys, it is me and Doge, Bees Knees, and Verduga29 signing out.